Okay, so here we go. How to hopefully figure out to do this first holiday homework with this information. Um, what is this? This is a circular motion experiment. That's the gear. You might have remembered doing this last year. But anyway, here's the instruction sheet. Hopefully you've had a read of this so we can go fast. Here is the data that you, hopefully you've copied and pasted or you've gotten to Excel. Now, I've also included the equation from the instruction sheet because basically that's the short version of the instructions. In this equation, we've got t equals this ugly square root times the square root of r. So we want t on the vertical axis and we want square root of r on the horizontal axis. So we've got our r's, that's going to be on the horizontal axis, but square rooted. And we've got all of these for 10 t's. So horizontal axis, here we go. We want the square root of r. The units are meters to the power of 0 0.5. And then you just equals. You can click on the number, and you click the little thing above the 6 and 0 0.5, and it gives you a square root. Okay. For the vertical axis, we want the average t in seconds, and that will be equals average bracket scan across those three numbers, close bracket, divide by 10, because there are 10 circles each. Okay, so this right here will make our data. So that'll make our data. Get rid of these others down here. Don't need them. Insert this little puppy, that little puppy, and here we go. Okay, now this one is really important that we zoom in. So if we right-click and format the axis, we won't need anything uh, probably lower than 0.45. Enter, there we go. And on the vertical axis, change this number over here to probably 0.3. Let's go for 0.3. We can always tweak this later. Okay, so now we're zoomed in. We're aiming for merit, remember? Achieved. We're really close, but we might as well aim for merit. We'll turn on the axis titles. The bottom one, here it comes, is the square root of radius, which has meters to the power of 0 0.5 as the unit. And the vertical one, the vertical one, if we get that off of the way, the vertical one is the average period. I think I spelled that right. Um, capital T, unit of seconds. Chart title, you don't really need, but if you really want, you could say average T versus square root of R. Okay? So, that's our graph. Turning on our line of best fit is the trend line. Little arrow, more options. Scroll down, there's our equation. So this is our line of best fit. So we get rid of the y, line of best fit, and that's gonna be t equals, and a square root of r goes there. So r to the 0 0.5 power. Now, might as well make this bigger because we're going for merit. So might as well make it bigger and go to home and make this even bigger. Man, that's huge. Okay, so. So far, so good. Now, to get achieved, all you need to do is a second line. Remember, you need two lines, and you're home free to write your conclusion. To get a merit, it's a bit nastier. We need error bars. So, let's see here. Error bars. Horizontal error bar is going to be from that square root of r. Okay, each r is good to the nearest, well, look at that, to the nearest centimeter. Each r is good to the nearest centimeter. So we use that. We're going to use that divided by the r multiplied by the number we're graphing, and we're graphing the square root of r. And don't forget, you multiply by the power. So that is times 0 0.5 at the end. Okay, so that's not my equation. That's just my notes into how I'm going to make these numbers. So here's my equation, 0 0.01 multiplied by that first r 
whoops, not multiplied, whoa, back at the truck up, divided by that first R, multiplied by the number we're graphing, then multiplied by the 0 0.5. Okay, yet again, check to make sure this is doing what you think it's doing. It's always good. Okay, now, vertical error bar. Now, it comes from the average. So that's going to be our max minus our min cut in half, and then we also have to cut it by 10. All right? So, equals bracket, max bracket, scan your numbers, close your bracket, minus min bracket, scan your numbers, close both brackets, divide by 2, divide by 10. So there you go. Okay? Make sure you check at least one of these rows to make sure Excel is doing what you think it's doing. I'm just going to risk it and roll with it right now. All right, so next is we want to turn these error bars on here. So you click on these little things. You click on this, and you click on error bars, and there they are. Now we've just got to format them, okay? So we'll do the horizontal first. Right-click, Format Error Bars. We want to scroll down to the bottom and customize, specify to the horizontal error bars, these right here. And then we do it again. And then we click OK. And there they are. Now we want to do the verticals. We want to customize the verticals. So we'll click on Customize, click on Specify, click on the top bit, and scroll the numbers you want, and do it twice. Once for up, once for down. And click OK, and there we go. So now we've got our error bars. Okay, now, error line. We're trying to make this as big as humanly possible so we can have a good look. And we can probably trim the axis even more if we want. The farther away everything is, the easier it is. So I'm going to make this 0.34. There we go. Okay. So, we want an error line that goes through at least half of these error bars. So what that means, what I'm looking at, is the second one. I'm going to aim for the bottom left. And it's going to pull way up through here. I'm actually going to aim for the last one. I think that's the seventh one. We've got seven dots. And the top right on the seventh one. So... I'll put this down here, E-line. What I'm aiming for, here's my horizontal, and here's my vertical, and I'm aiming for the second, the bottom left, just so I remember which I'm going, and I'm aiming for the seventh one, the one on the top, and uh, top right. Okay, so the second one. Second one left. I want to make this number. Oh, that's the first one. Try again. I want to make the second one left. I got to subtract this number. So that'll push it left. And then the second one is that number. And the bottom, I want to subtract that error bar. So that pushes it down. So that's one of them. Now the seventh one. The seventh one is way up here, which is the last dot. It equals this number. And to push it right, we've got to add the error bar. And this number, to push it up, we want to add this number. Okay, now, to put these, to put the second line on, we have to select the data. We have to add a series. I'll call it E-line. And X values are these little ones here. The Y values are those little ones there. And when we get rid of all this, hopefully, yes, there they are, the little red dots. So how we connect the little red dots is you can add trend line by right-clicking. And we want the equation to get merit. So here is my error line. That red one, uh, yeah, it hits the last three. It's arguable that it hits the third one, and it starts there. So you're using about five of the seven, so that's pretty good. And it's a steeper gradient, which it should be. Okay, so, error line. 
label it, get rid of the Y, put a T, get rid of the X, put an R, square root it, and make the text bigger so you can see it. Okay, so now, my friends, we are ready for a conclusion, okay? Now, one thing that we probably want to do, I didn't mention this before, but I've already worked it out, is work out what the theoretical gradient should have been. Ours is 0.515. Our error line is 0.5649. What we've got is a theoretical gradient when you plug in the controlled variables of 0.665. Okay, so we're a bit off, but that's okay. If you remember this experiment, that's entirely expected. So now we're ready for a calculation of our variables. Okay, so I'll put this over here. The calculation of our variables. Let's play with a little much. Calculation of our variables. Okay, so the calculation with the gradients. That's what I'm after. The calculation with the gradients is something like this. Okay. We've got the uncertainty for our line of best fit. You subtract the two numbers. It doesn't matter which is first. If you get a negative, just throw the negative away. So these are my two gradients of my two equations. I subtract them. You get 0 0.0499. You round that off to one sig fig. In this case, that's 0 0.05. Then you shove that into your line of best fit. So we type in our new equation. We round off the one on the graph. Remember, it looks like this and we round the 0.515 off to have the same number of decimal places as the uncertainty we just found. We also round off our vertical intercept, just to make it look all happy, to have the same number of decimal places. And finally, we want our how far away the equation on our graph is versus what we should have got. So the 0.515 versus the theoretical of 0.66. In this case, it's 23% off. All right. So there's our calculations, and here comes our conclusion. So, you can pause this, and you can have a read, but basically the first statements are all about achieved. The second statements are all about merit. So this down here that I've just highlighted is all about merit. You deal with the range of your line best fit. In this case, our theoretical did not, I repeat, did not fit inside that range. It's quite a bit above it. It's actually 23% above the, the gradient of 0.52. Now, if this happens, which can happen, it doesn't mean you fail. It just means, as this last statement says, you've got some issues with the data that was collected or the uncertainty on the data that was collected. It gives you something to say in your discussion. Okay? So there you go. Hopefully this helps. There's your screenshot if you want to pause. There's your screenshot if you want to pause for your graph. And then play around with the page margin so this thing fits on two pages. Okay? Good luck.